Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Incas, who are having quite the revival this patch, both in terms of performance as a top sieve recently, but also, as you might expect, in their play rate, basically doubling what it was a month ago. Specifically, we're going to check out their castle unique unit, the Kamiak, and how they compare to pikemen against cavalry, how they keep up with the swordsman line these days in melee battles, and in what situations their extra range comes in handy. We'll get to the Imperial Age in the second half, and that is where you tend to see them more often, but as it requires a castle to make, let's start things off in the Castle Age. To me, Eagle Warriors have a different role entirely as anti-archer, and Kamiak really feel like more of a blend between the pikemen and swordsman line. Looking at their stats, you can see they split the difference in terms of attack and are a blend of both types of armor, with one more melee armor than pikes, but one less pierce armor than long swordsmen. They share an attack bonus against cavalry with pikes, but are not as extreme, again feeling like a blend of the two units here, though where the comparison starts to break down is its unusually high 70 HP, and of course its extra range. Remember, Incas have a food discount on all three units, which would be minus 25% in Castle Age, but are missing supplies. Even still, it's clear that the Kamiak is the most expensive of this group, and also require castles, so looking just at the stats, they might seem hard to justify. One thing that does work in their favor though is they have the fastest training time out of this group, which just helps to mass them up, and their castles are also discounted 15% from a sieve bonus. Still, it feels like you're paying a bit of a premium, especially in gold cost, reflecting their extra reach. So how big of a deal is that one range? If you remember my Inca overview from 7 years ago, at that time they obliterated champions with equal numbers, and believe it or not, melee pathing is better than HDs back then, so I think it's worth following up on. To get a sense of the benefit of one extra range, we'll start here with two nearly identical units. Here I have a Castle Age Kamiak and an Amazon Warrior, which I've modified with triggers to have the exact same stats, but without the extra range. They both have the same attack rate, and the only difference here is having 0 or 1 range, so any difference we see can be entirely attributed to that feature. Feel free to try to predict how large of a difference this will make in large battles, say 30 Kamiaks against 30 Amazon Warriors. If we start simply with a 1v1 test, you might assume they're perfectly balanced, but keep in mind one extra range means the Kamiak always gets to attack first. So despite being exactly equal in HP, attack, and armor, the Kamiak wins, and already has an advantage. This happens against basically any melee unit, and functionally gives your Kamiak first strike. Next though, we'll scale things up to 5v5, and already we see an impact. It's very dependent on pathing and how confused the enemy units are when finding targets, but it's clear the Kamiaks are all engaging earlier, and end with anywhere between 10 and 30% of their HP left. The results only get more dramatic from there, and if we switch to 10 versus 10, we notice all the Kamiaks enter fighting significantly easier, and in this case end with 40% of their HP left. Remember the other stats of these units are all identical, so this is purely from one extra range giving a first strike and getting more units involved in the fight right away. Of course, this pattern continues, and with 20 versus 20, it's nearly 50% of their HP left, and with 30 versus 30, it is in fact exactly 50% from the test I ran. So far, these tests are telling us a couple of things. First, it's obviously a big advantage in melee battles, but second, you don't need a massive battle of 60 versus 60 to get the effect. Even with a group as small as 10 units, the effect is already quite noticeable. Now, of course, one thing hidden here is that Kamiak base stats are kind of bad, blending pikes and longswords, so maybe a better comparison instead of isolating the effect is to see how well they do against longswords as a benchmark. Stats-wise, I think it would be hard to say at a glance which is better, but I think you know where this is going. 1v1, the longsword wins, and while it's not considered a particularly strong unit, it seems Kamiak's 1-on-1 -on -one are kind of garbage. Even if we only scale this up to 5v5 though, the results already flip. It depends again on the pathing of the longswords, but in a best case scenario is about an even fight. And if there's some unfortunate pathing for the longsword, it can be as high as a third of the HP left for the Kamiaks. Of course, just as a reminder, if we take away the range and go back to the almost identical Amazon Warriors, they lose this fight every time. But of course, why stop at 5v5? And going even further, with 10v10, it gets pretty wild, with over 50% of the Kamiak's HP left. And at 20 versus 20, they almost seem to hard counter longswords, with nearly two-thirds of their HP left over. Even knowing it would be good going in and seeing it in isolation, I was still surprised by how effective that one range is. 
if the devs ever truly nailed melee pathing in the game, I think that would probably be a huge nerf for the Kamiaks, as currently they benefit in large battles from other units struggling to engage efficiently. Keep in mind they are about 20% more expensive than Inca Wong Swords with their discount, so this is slightly exaggerating the difference. But even with balanced resources, it's still not really that close, and Kamiaks are looking pretty great. Now, I don't want to go completely overboard and suggest that they're in any way unstoppable, as anything truly specialized against them, like Samurai, Jaguar Warriors, or Teutonic Knights, are still going to absolutely shred Kamiax thanks to either high bonus damage or absurd armor. So far though, they're doing great as a general melee unit, but now let's take a look at what's probably the most common melee unit in Castle Age, the Knight, who they happen to have an attack bonus against. While we'd probably expect them to do well, personally I sometimes wonder if their high cost is justified rather than using the much cheaper pikemen in this matchup, so let's find out. To look at that comparison, one on one the Kamiuk has a smaller bonus behind the scenes, but its higher HP and armor means it ends up doing more damage than the pikemen. Of course they're both a good trade against knights, even with bloodlines, but where the Kamiuk gets about 1.3 times its value worth of damage, the pikeman gets about 1.6, essentially meaning the pikeman is technically a more cost effective choice. This is just 1v1 though, and if we scale things up, Kamiaks become incredibly deadly against knights. Here with 12 units against 12, the Kamiaks win very comfortably, and of course are the cheaper army to begin with. You might reasonably assume that pikes as a great cavalry counter can do something similar, but they really don't. In fact they lose to an equal number of knights, and are just considered a counter because they cost less than half as much as knights to begin with. Of course, while a trade might look good on paper, if you end up losing your entire army, your opponent's knights might just have free reign to attack your eco. What I like about Kamiaks is you can actually take those equal scale fights and not just win on paper value wise, but also end up with units left over, giving you some initiative. Now I should point out as well that all of this applies to camels, and if anything applies even more. The Kamiaks attack bonus is slightly lower than it was against knights, but don't let that fool you, camels have very weak stats, and both of the units here survive pretty comfortably 1v1. Again as the armies scale though, the Kamiak perform much better, even when outnumbered, and in this example, with double the resources spent on camels, only two Kamiaks go down out of 15. I'm not sure why anyone would make camels against Incas, and especially why they would try to fight Kamiaks instead of running away, but it's just to point out the lower bonus against camels doesn't really hold them back. Of course, keep in mind all of this has been against melee units, and as good as Kamiaks have looked so far, they're really not a good choice against crossbows. They take about the same number of arrows as a longsword, and while Kamiaks have a bit of extra speed and range, it's obviously not enough to make them anti-archer. Now there is a unique tech in Imperial Age to help them out in this exact situation, but to summarize them in Castle Age, their selling feature is really just their versatility in melee fights, taking great trades against most infantry units once you have a critical mass of say 10 or 15, while also packing a punch against cavalry in particular. Of course, you have to weigh the cost of castles in there as well, and that's really their biggest downside. It's often well into castle age before you could even start massing them at all, and Incas already have good choices in crossbows and eagles for late castle age, making Kamiaks less popular than I think they would be otherwise. But now let's switch to the imperial age and see what, if anything, changes, as this is actually when you see the unit more often in my experience. First off, keep in mind you have not just the elite upgrade, but also their unique tech fabric shields, which gives them additional armor on top of all of the blacksmith upgrades. Notice in terms of attack though, they really start to lag behind the champion, and lean into being a low attack but high durability unit, with a lot of armor and HP. They also gain a bit more hidden bonus damage against cavalry, though definitely not keeping up with the halberdier in that regard. On the flip side, since their champions miss Gambazins, Kamiaks end as easily the best in this group against arrows, again highlighting their general flexibility. Also keep in mind while their cost drops a bit, as the Inca food discount grows from minus 25% to 30%, your alternatives in the Halberdier and Champion also become cheaper, giving unusually good value in their own right. In fact, if we balance resources between elite Kamiaks and Inca discounted champions, that fight can really go either way, depending on pathing. Elite Kamiaks just don't immediately feel quite as dominant in Imperial Age, mostly held back by having just 8 base attack. Their extra range is still enough to let them hold up against other massed infantry units in general though. In a balanced fight against World Raiders for example, which admittedly aren't the tankiest, Elite Kamiaks end with about half their HP left in a mid-sized battle. They win even more convincingly against Berserks, again thanks almost entirely to units engaging with fewer pathing issues. 
Of course, as you'd expect on the other extreme, samurai with their very large anti-unique unit bonus still win. So you always have to be smart about the fights you're taking against counter units. But now let's see how they fare against cavalry, as that is supposed to be their specialty. Though in this case, the halberdier's 20 extra bonus damage for zero gold is pretty tempting. And they're also discounted for Incas. So let's see if the Kamiak's higher cost is really worth it. To start one-on-one -on -one looking at population efficiency, the Kamiak attacks about 50% faster than Halberdiers. So despite doing less damage per attack, they actually end up doing significantly more damage in the end. Crunching the numbers in a cost analysis though, both units are trading about 1.1 times their cost if we don't give gold any special weight. On a small scale like this, it's hard to say that either one is really hard countering the Paladin, and it seems almost more like an even trade. If we try on a larger scale though, the contrast is dramatic. For example, 20 versus 20, elite Kamiaks end with about a third of their HP left, losing about a thousand resources of value, whereas the Paladins lose 2700. That's cost and population efficiency. On the flip side, as you might expect, 20 Inca Halberdiers lose to 20 Paladins, and I don't think that should be a surprise, but maybe unexpectedly, they basically trade equally in terms of total resources. I expect that's a surprise, as Halberdiers are supposed to be a good counter unit. But first remember we're valuing gold as the same as food and wood. And second, the main point of cheap units is that you can spam more of them to get a numbers advantage and some effects of Lanchester square law, not just match your enemy's numbers, though that isn't always possible if you're pop capped. If we ignore population restrictions and flip to balanced resources, factoring the Inca discount, we have eight paladins against 22 halberdiers, in which case they end with 90% of their HP left. Elite Kamiaks in a similar balance test, in case you're wondering, end with about 80%, but in a post-imperial situation, it's hard to count on having three times your opponent's army size. And to me, that's the biggest selling feature of Kamiaks. While they do need to be massed to an extent, they don't need to outnumber enemy cavalry in the way that halberdiers do in order to be effective, and equal numbers is more than good enough. In addition to being arguably a better choice against cavalry than spear units, maybe their best quality in Imperial Age is their better resistance to ranged units, thanks to their unique tech fabric shields. They take six more arrows than a champion and almost triple a halberdier, given our blesters have three anti-spear bonus damage. So you're getting at least the anti-cavalry ability of a halberdier without the extreme weakness to archers and skirmishers. Of course, it goes without saying that the Inca Elite Eagle Warrior is a considerable step up from that and are genuinely anti-archer, whereas Kamiaks are more archer resistant. In fact, the Inca Elite Eagle Warrior actually becomes even more impressive when you compare them against units with 11 attack, like cavalry archers, longbows, and viking arblesters, as those discounted Inca Eagles still take 60 arrows, whereas the other options are impacted by the plus one attack thrown in there. So to put it all together, generally Kamiaks are thought of more of as an Imperial Age unit, but as we saw, it can be pretty dangerous in Castle Age if you mass them up, even if some of the Inca's other good options are often the go-to. The extra reach is an insane ability on its own in melee, and is enhanced even further against knights by having an anti-cavalry bonus on top. While I think they lose a bit of their edge against infantry in Imperial, they start to stand out even more compared to halberdiers when population efficiency is taken into account. And after fabric shields, they stand out against archers, making them feel like an incredibly well-rounded spear unit, albeit with a gold cost. Especially in team games, where gold is less of an issue, and you may want some of that population efficiency and versatility, Kamiex can be a great option to consider along eagles, depending on the situation. Those are just my takeaways though, and next time we'll hopefully take a look at the other Inca unique unit, the Slinger. Big thanks to Seb, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, Woodruff, James, Admiral Zarkon, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon, as always, for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.